all the years of endless trying all the tears that never would stop all the times you felt like dying climbing your way to the top they're just the parts of a dream on a journey they're fears in the dark that you'll have to face find every reason to keep on believing in you that's what dreamers do Hi, I'm Paula Stone. I'm from Independence, Missouri, and you're watching Shooting from the Hip. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Eddie Kilgallen, uh, who owns a recording studio and is a fine musician. And we're here today to talk about how he's gotten started in all of this. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Hi, Paul. I'm well. How are you today? I am wonderful. So glad that you can be on our show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Um, basically, I would like to find out, first of all, you know, how did you get into the music business? I've sat there and noticed on your uh, videos and stuff that, I mean, you've done really good. Well, you know, believe it or not, um, I was singing in chorus in sixth grade, and I got the chance to sing a solo to the song, Try to Remember the Kind of September. And anyway, my sixth grade chorus teacher, gave everybody a gift if you sang a solo. He gave me, well, this is 1976 now, he gave me a copy of Barry Manilow's Trying to Get the Feeling Again album. Back then, Barry Manilow was the Justin Bieber of the 70s. <laughs> so uh, I fell in love with the music. I fell in love with, with the fact that you could sit at a piano and write songs. And it's from that album and listening to those songs as a kid, I grew up and just wanted to, to be in music and wanted to sit at a piano and sing songs and make a living. and. Knock on wood, so far so good, you know. Wonderful. And also, um, so you've been singing sixth, sixth grade. Um, what have you been doing since your uh, school years? Well, um, didn't go to college. I should have, but I didn't because I was playing out five nights a week in high school. And as soon as I graduated high school, I just went right into the clubs in upstate New York and just played music and uh, traveled around and got interested in performing country music in the late 80s and met a songwriter from Nashville and eventually led me down to Nashville. My wife and I moved down here in 93 and it wasn't long after that I joined a group called Ricochet and we went on to have some wonderful success on the radio and a gold album and a number one record and stuff and then songwriting started working out for me. And, Still on the road, still playing music, and still uh, very blessed to be making a living as a musician here in Nashville, Tennessee. So I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. Great. Um, have you sat and uh, been asked to play with any major musical groups? Well, when I uh, left the band Ricochet in 2001, I spent a year on the road with Chad Rock. And then I was in the initial band that started the Nashville Star TV show back in the uh, start of 2003. And right after we did those tapings, I was asked to join Montgomery Gentry as their keyboard player. So that was January 1st, 2003. I'm still with the boys, and this is year 11 for me on the road with Eddie and Troy. That is awesome. Yeah. And um, is there any other outside activities that you've done? Um, I've read about you uh, working, with, uh, writing songs, and um, that you visited ch uh, sick children in the hospital. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Back in 2006, in the summer, I was watching 60 Minutes, of all things, and a story, Dan Rather had a story on about an organization out of New York City called Songs of Love. And what Songs of Love does is it writes individual songs for chronically ill and ill children in hospitals all around the world. So basically, I contacted Songs of Love and said, this is something I really want to get involved in. Send me the details. So basically, since 2006, I've been writing songs for the organization. And how it works is if a child is sick, and spending time in a hospital, their mom or dad or their uh, care provider can fill out a little profile sheet, which has got the child's name, 
their interests, or where they go to school, other pets' names, what they like to do, their hobbies. And we as songwriters take that information and we write them an original song with their name and their friends' names and their hobbies and their pets' names and mom and dad. So that when they're going through these treatments that are sometimes long, painful, uh, they put on their headphones and they listen to the song that was written about them and we call it the medicine of music. And it really helps these kids get through some really tough times. So it's a great organization. We've written 23,601 songs since 1996 for uh, these kids. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. That is totally amazing. And what have you gotten into with the uh, chil with the children's hospital as far as the rooms? Uh, I was reading something about that. I have uh, been very blessed to be able to lend my music to many children's charities. Another one very dear to me because it was started by a childhood friend in Minnesota. It's called Adopt-A-Room. And um, my friend Brian Shepherdly lost his daughter to childhood leukemia when she was 11. And while she was going through this, their family spent a lot of time in hospitals. And um, when she passed away, he thought, you know what I could do to honor her memory is I could try to raise money to help build hospital rooms that are bright, cheery, kid-friendly, family-friendly. And uh, he started the organization with another friend of his called Adopter Room. And they've gone on to help facilitate the building of these incredible children's hospital rooms where the kids can heal and get treatment and feel like a normal kid. You know, they got the widescreen TVs, they got the Nintendo, they, they've actually got video cameras on the roofs of the hospital so the kid can look around and see what the weather's like. I mean, all kinds of really cool stuff. So what a great, what a great testament, what a great way to honor his daughter and something that will live on for forever. That is just truly inspirational. Uh, yeah. I'm really glad that I got to talk to you today. Um, you're just amazing. Well, Paula, you know, I've been blessed to have the gift of music and um, found ways to use it to help give back. So thank you for contacting me. Um, I love Missouri. Ricochet got started in Missouri, so I have a lot of country songs played in, in Missouri. I love it there. So. Yay! Yay! So, <laughs> well, it's a pleasure talking with you today. All right. Well, thank you very much, Eddie Kay. I will um, get to talking to you later on, and thank you very much. You're watching Shooting from the Hip. This is Paula Stone from Independence. Have a great day.